I'm Casey from CTI Music Ministries and this is Chris, the Executive Director at CTI. And we're just going to sit down. Chris has got some exciting announcements and some big news that he wants to share um, just with our CTI community, uh, supporters, host homes, uh, foreign partners, and just all of our friends. And so I'm going to ask him some questions and he's going to share a little bit about what is, uh, what's new with him. So. Before we jump in, um, you guys have a pretty exciting development, uh, especially, hopefully that's coming in the next few weeks. You want to talk a little bit about that? I do. The Reed family is growing from three to four. Yay. So our two-year-old daughter, Clara, is going to be a big sister. Hopefully our due date is November 28th, so okay. right around Thanksgiving. Since Clara was born on the 4th of July, we're kind of pulling for Thanksgiving just so we can keep the holiday theme going. Sure. <laughs> um, but we're having another little girl, so there's going to be twice as many little fingers for Daddy to be wrapped around. Ah, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so exciting. Um, so you guys are expecting another daughter, but there's another big transition happening in your family on the horizon. So you want to share about that? There is. It has you know, long been our vision to, uh, to raise a family for Rebecca to be able to come out of the workforce and be a stay-at-home mom, uh, and for us to raise our family near their family, uh, Clara and little baby sister. We'll have, uh, I think, 14 cousins <laughs> by this count and uh, numerous aunts and uncles and grandparents, and none of them live in Wilmer. So as our family expands, um, we're also, we've made the decision to pick up and move so that we'll be closer to where that family is. Um, Rebecca's gonna come home and be with the kids and we're actually moving to North Carolina where most of my family is based and her family is pretty close there too. They're about eight hours away. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> what does this mean then for CTI? Yeah, CTI is not in North Carolina. CTI <laughs> is based in, the Midwest in Wilmer, Minnesota. So um, in my official capacity as executive director, I'll be transitioning out of that uh, as we move to North Carolina at the end of January 2018. So you'll be here for the next <coughs> couple months and yep. the baby will be born and then you guys are headed along. God willing, we'll be yeah. uh, a couple months after delivery so that we have uh, opportunity for baby to go through her checkups with doctors and mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, end of January is okay. the intended move time. Yeah, and then so who will be kind of stepping into your role, or what's that going to look like, mm. even in the interim? Well, I think it's important for our community to know uh, that CTI is um, uh, is overseen by a board of directors. Right, it's not just me. It's not just the staff. Uh, so we have eight people who serve on our board of directors who are passionate about our mission, who are passionate about seeing it continue, uh, and we've all been working together, myself and the board, on what this transition will look like. Uh, and we're still working on that. Uh, actually, if you want to put an 800 number at the bottom that you know people watching <laughs> can call and say, hey, I'd love to be a part of that um, I sort of kid. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet um, because Part of the reality is the way CTI uh, works and what's uh, efficient for us has been shifting uh, as well. Uh, my involvement as the executive director, I've had a lot of involvement in the programs, uh, in developing and in uh, developing curriculum and doing a lot of the training and, and kind of help, uh, helping establish a lot of the values and why we do what we do. And so much of that is so well in place right now and is really um, understood and embraced uh, by the staff at large, by the entire CTI community. We, we have a really high volunteerism from alumni and, and others who contribute to how the organizations run as well. That uh, we don't think that the executive director position needs to look the same going forward. Uh, and so there may be parts of what I do now that uh, kind of get become responsibilities of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of things that I do or have done that have uh, already transitioned to other members of the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, and there will certainly be some, some ongoing leadership needs, so we'll have uh, someone who will be serving in that role, but um, it's, it's not gonna look the same as it has mm -hmm. uh, with me in leadership, and, and it shouldn't. Yeah. I, there will never be another Chris Reed, and, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, some would even say that's that's desirable. <laughs> we'll let we'll let the viewers decide. 
Yeah, if we were Facebook living, this would be like all the hearts and thumbs up <laughs> be floating across Angry the screen. Angry react. <laughs> so, but I mean, you seem very confident that CTI will just continue on in the mission that, that we have. And but where, like, where does that confidence come from for you? Um, I'm. One thing that I think is really cool about CTI is the community, uh, CTI is bigger than just the staff, right? It's, we have a huge community of alumni who are involved uh, in the ministry of the organization as well. Um, but I think of CTI as a movement, and the movement is galvanized around a vision and a mission. It's not galvanized around a personality. Um, so people can come and go, but the mission remains uh, viable. So I'm not at all worried about uh, me as a person not being part of the staff, that's not going to impact our ability to carry out a mission. Um, but the other thing that gives me confidence is I just, I, God hasn't removed his hand from what we're doing. The thing that we're doing, sharing the gospel through music, is uh, still as relevant as it was when we were founded in you know, 1975. Back then, the draw was really to use music to share the gospel abroad because there was an attraction value to coming and seeing a, an American band. And, and that has waned some as the world has flattened culturally. Um, but it, it's still relevant in certain places. But it has grown in its relevance within our own community. Like using music as a common affinity that brings people together gives us a community in which to understand the gospel, to learn the gospel, to respond to the gospel together, and then to share it with others. Um, and so even as perhaps the relevance of one aspect of our mission is diminishing some, it's growing here uh, among the, the, the community that we mobilize. Mm -hmm. So I see it going forward because of that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you, a lot of that was you kind of pouring into the program side of things, because that's kind of where you started um but mm. could you just share a little bit about like what your journey through cti <laughs> looked like i mean i know that's 15 plus years of of life for you yeah um, but <clears throat> maybe just like share a little bit about some of the things that were the most impactful to you that mm. um, you'll take along if, if you know now i mean i know you'll <laughs> probably continue to discover those things as you move on just like our full-time team members do um. probably i think i think the most impacting things have been more recent though uh my history with cti goes back 17 years i was first participated in the full-time program in 2000 i did two back-to-back -back years i led two full-time teams as a sound tech mm -hmm. and then did the two summers that were associated with that uh and so then in august of 2002 i, I went away from cti for 18 months, although I came back in there and led another summer team in 2003. So we just finished summer of 2017. It was my 17th consecutive summer with CTI. Uh, but I joined the full-time staff in 2004. So I've been, it'll be just about 13 years when I transition out at the end of January that I've been on staff. And yeah, I have learned a lot of stuff in that amount of time just by nature of uh, experience and, and doing things. Um, I didn't start as CTI's CEO or CFO, and I'm serving in both of those roles right now, so I've learned a lot about what it means to manage an organization like this. Um, but the most impacting thing, which is what you asked, has really been probably within the last five years. Um, like many of our participants, I share the story of being raised in the church, mm -hmm. you know, of course, which we don't say because of the literal translation, but I always, I've grown up as a Christian, as a Christ follower. Uh, and because of that, some of the preciousness of the gospel kind of gone over my head. You know, I, it has been assumed. Um, and being in a like-minded community for so long, one thing I really love about the community is that we all point each other towards the gospel. It's not a top-down, you know, organization or mission. It's very much an everybody pouring into each other kind of mission. And I've been poured into by the community. Um, and so the most impacting thing to me, I think, has been just within the last five years, coming to a new understanding uh, of how big of a deal the gospel is, uh, and not just how big of a deal it is that Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died and then rose again, but that I needed him to do that, mm -hmm. that I am in need of redemption and that God has provided a redeemer. And the more I come to grips with the scale of those two differences, how big my need is, and how significant God's provision is, um, the, I, I just think the more the more I understand worship, too. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit about maybe like your history with CTI. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about 
what your future with CTI is going to look like? <laughs> Oh man, I've been envious of the alumni community at times. It's like, I just want to be one of the one of the cool people on the road that teams visit, right? That uh, you get to spoil full timers when they come to your town. I, I'm looking forward to being that person. Uh, I'm going to be working in the AV industry. So uh, I remember a story from years ago when a, a team visited a, a particular alum in a particular part of the country, and they came away from that interaction with like, "Hey, we got new mic stands and new this," and I just I'm I'm thinking this is going to be cool. I get to bless CTI that way and continue to be a part of the community. But everything that our alums do, um, hosting teams, uh, sponsoring team members, uh, being part of recruiting, continuing to push people towards the organization as a participant, uh, and continuing to contribute within my areas of, of gifting and strength and passion, uh, whether those are technical or musical or consulting from afar on various things. I just. Um, CTI, you, you can check out any time you like, but you could never leave, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> um, I tried once, so. You yeah, know. <laughs> me too. You mentioned some sound equipment. Is that kind of the direction that you're headed after this, or mm. do you know what you're going to do for a job? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work for uh, an audiovisual integration company that was uh, founded by a friend of mine. So uh, this is a company that works with uh, ministries and churches to kind of assess their audio, visual, lighting, uh, video needs um, and help them uh, come up with solutions and design and install them. Uh, and there's an eye to the fact that every dollar spent uh, towards AV is a dollar not spent elsewhere in the mission of the organization, so I'm, I'm really happy that it continues to be a ministry that I'm working for uh, and not just a business. So that's kind of exciting knowing that that's what you're walking into and it's a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. um, are there other aspects of this transition that you're just excited about <laughs> in your family? I'm excited about the, the prospect of, of going the next step in our vision for our family. Uh, I mean, it's bittersweet uh, leaving Wilmer, leaving CTI, leaving all the people, and uh, I could talk for a long time about all the reasons it's bittersweet, uh, but it's for the joy set before us, right? It's for this, um, what we really believe God has called us to. So I'm excited about that part of the transition. Mm. Are there some challenges that you, <clears throat> that you're just anticipating might come up as you guys transition? I and mean, I'm sure that this whole community is gonna wanna be supporting you in prayer and just kind of walking with you, so. You know, I was thinking about this earlier. When we debrief our summer teams who have been on the field with us for six weeks, we spend an intense day going through closure and debriefing and we recognize it's not enough. Mm -hmm. And our full-timers who have been with us for nine or 10 months, we spend an entire week going through closure and debriefing and acknowledge that it's not enough. So I'm not sure what it's gonna take after 17 years to really process an exit transition. Um, so yeah, I'm, I don't want to be naive about the fact that there's gonna be challenges for me personally, uh, moving away from working for a ministry and, and going back to uh, the corporate world in some senses. Like I said, it's still, uh, it's still ministry. Um, I'm nervous about that. And um, uh, in particular, the CTI community uh, is just something I've been a part of for so long. Uh, laboring together with like-minded individuals who you're not just pursuing a mission together, but you're pouring into each other. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Rebecca and I are going to concentrate a lot on plugging into that kind of a community uh, in Raleigh where we go as well. But that's just something we're really passionate about and have found to be life-giving and essential. So for our alumni, I have to ask you, which like restaurant or coffee shop or whatever establishment <laughs> in Wilmer do you think you're going to really miss the most? So when you come back, mm. where, where do you where do you have to go when you come visit? You know, it's funny because kind of the standing rule is anytime we're not in Wilmer and people are like, where do you want to go to eat? We just say just as long as it's not something we have in Wilmer, which doesn't narrow it down a lot. You know, it just means, well, we can't go to McDonald's or, you know, we've got a Jimmy John's and a Qdoba now. So. Uh, the places I'll miss, I grew up in the Southwest, so uh, people know who know me know I like, uh, I like Mexican or, or Southwestern cuisine. So all of the places that lean that way in town have a, a warm spot in my heart. El Tap has been one of my favorites for a long time, uh, but certainly uh, Rosita's, Azteca, uh, the Taqueria in the mall. Mm. There's a little taco truck now that parks out here. Um, I haven't, have you been? 
I haven't. I got a taco truck. I've I, heard tales told of it. <laughs> are they are they good tales? Yeah. Okay. okay well then, on that, I'll, uh, I'll I'll have to take that into consideration as well. And yeah, all the coffee uh, all the coffee spots have a have a little warm spot in my heart as well. Um, you know, just all the little nooks around town where you can hang out and chat with people and, and, and drink good coffee. Come to Wilmer. We have That's tacos. right. <laughs> we have tacos and coffee. <laughs> tacos and coffee. Got to stay warm. Um, well, Chris, thanks so much for uh, just kind of sharing what's next for you. Um, you are greatly appreciated and I know will be greatly missed and, and are greatly treasured. So, um, but is there anything else just that you'd like to share with the community? Um, just what we have here. Man, that word community. Um, the CTI community is so far reaching. I don't even know if people realize it's it's not just the alumni, the staff, and the board. There's I don't even know how many host homes in the Wilmer area that have been involved with our ministry, and some of them have really deep relationships with some of us. Um, and I mean, there are, there are hosts who take road trips to go to alumni weddings. I mean, where do you find that? That's so cool, right? <clears throat> um, but for the sake of all of those people and our international partners, um, I just think it's important when you look at an organization that's going through a transition like this, there is um, kind of a knee-jerk reaction to go, oh, it's going to happen. Are things going to be okay? You know, the sky's falling. And... I'm so glad you asked that question about what gives me confidence that our mission can continue because I am confident that it will. The sky's not falling, you know. Um, this is actually, even though I've been telling people I'm not being pushed away from CTI, I'm being drawn to something else. Um, that said, there's some real uh, positive things for CTI in this transition. I am really looking forward. I've led the organization for nine years. Um, and we've, uh, we've done some great things, but even in, in that amount of time, anybody's weaknesses are going are gonna to become pretty firmly entrenched in the organization. And I think there's ways that we can look at CTI and go, hey, there's uh, areas where the organization needs to stretch and grow. Uh, and after nine years, I think a transition is a good thing to say, let's, let's have somebody else stretch and grow the organizations in the areas where I'm not strong. Um, there's a, a, a growing evident relevance gap between me and the people that we uh, that we seek to recruit and mobilize um, and I don't I don't begrudge that but I think it's going to be great to have uh, younger influence people who are closer to our, our demographic um, who will have more uh, more relevant ideas about how to do what we do and so I really look forward to viewing that I, I don't want to say from the sidelines because I don't feel like I'm going to be on the sidelines but not from the corner office, uh, in a sense. So the sky's not falling. In fact, I think that um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bright spots ahead for CTI in this transition.